Welcome back. You know when I'm doing the intro, something's gone completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> My boy Zoobs. Hey, let's go. Mr. Consistent. He's got the name now. That's He's what I'm Mr. Saying. Consistent. Your partner of crime let you down. My, hey, listen, Sharp, you done us dirty to be dirty. fair. Dirty. You done a last minute. Screw. <laughs> but but it's for a good reason. Yeah. Our boy HM is starting his first game in it for hashtag yeah. United. So he's starting his first game today. Yeah, so they're real. playing now. So Sharp's gone to support. So I'm gonna don't let you off, well. Sharp, but don't don't do that again. Yeah, for real, man. <laughs> but listen, we've got a special one today, man. Trust me. You say talented. Huh? The most talented. Talented, listen, singer. Yeah. Songwriter. Producer. Hey, producer. Video director. Performer. Everything. Goes by the name of Nish. My on? brother. What's happening, boys? My brother, thank you on? for coming, my bro. Nah, man, it's my pleasure. Thank my you pleasure. for coming, man. Honestly. What are you saying though? How's how's your day been? You know what? I'm mad jet lagged, man. I can't even lie. Yeah? I landed yesterday and I'm just like trying to find my feet and trying to find um, the timings and stuff. But yeah. other than that, I'm good. I'm good. Can't and complain. From Dubai? From Dubai, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's where you reside now, So right? yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I've been there for the last year, man. Yeah? How enjoying, you finding enjoying it? Enjoying the weather. It's hot. So, you know. That's beautiful. Bro. Weather's great. Um, a bit different. Like, I guess a bit different style of life. Yeah. Different, like, pace of life. Yeah. But do you know what? Like, do you, do you know what's crazy? A lot of the mandem are out there as well from the UK. I've made, I made a, like a decent community out there. And it's been all right, man. Mm. It's not, I clocked it. It's actually not that far. Not a lot of people are like, oh yeah, seven hours. And like getting to Dubai to London is actually not that deep. Yeah. And getting to Dubai from anywhere is actually, unless you're like in LA and it's a yeah, bit, then it's a bit yeah, long. Yeah, anyway, but yeah. yeah, it's generally quite, quite central and in the world. What made you want to move out there? To be fair, I just needed like a change of scenery, man. Mm. UK, as much as I love it, as much as I it will always be my home, London's my home. I'm a Londoner by heart. I just felt like I was at that stage in my life where I needed a change of scenery. I needed some good weather. You know, like I had a few hiccups with my health over the last mm. year, last couple of years. Yeah. So I was just like, do you know what? Let's see how it goes. And, and, and the worst case is if I don't like it, guess what? Back to London. Yeah, so 100%. Yeah, it's yeah, kind yeah. of where I am with it. Do you feel like, and you know, like London's like a lot of, like it's fast paced, like it's, it's quick. And do you feel like in Dubai, it's a lot slowed down? You I think it, it, it depends. It dep kind of depends, obviously, because Dubai can also be very fast paced. It's also like they call it the city that never sleeps. Mm. So, like, you know, you already know from Monday to Sunday, there's something going on. All the malls are kind of open until like 1 a.m. and stuff. Yeah. On like a random, like Wednesday, yeah. you yeah. can just like go go somewhere something's always open so in that respect it's very fast paced in terms of how the day goes it's quite slow paced it's a little bit more you know uh, it's a very small place geographically as well yeah. Th there's a joke that goes around in dubai is like to get from anywhere from anywhere takes 20 minutes doesn't matter where you are it takes yeah, 20 minutes yeah. to get there um and yeah just like it's a very transient place so a lot of people are, are going in and out mm. a lot of temporary people there a lot of temporary businesses like i've seen shops open and close I've seen people yeah, come yeah. and it's go. One them, yeah. It's yeah. one of those places that's very kind of like fluid and, and, and transient. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people kind of find themselves there or they kind of make it or break it there. You know what I feel I mean? like that's a common theme now, isn't it? A lot yeah. of people are moving, not, not just the Dubai, the Dubai, but they're just leaving London. Yeah. Like a lot of people are just leaving England. They're leaving to go start and like a whole like, new chapter yeah. in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Started to think, boy, that might be the next move, man. I, I, th I think for yeah. me as well, because it was close to like Bangladesh, yeah. And like I could get there quite quickly. I had yeah. a lot of work that was happening on that side okay. of the world, so it kind of made sense for yeah. me to like kind of be there. If that makes sense, it was a three, not four hour flight, you mm. know, rather than an eleven hour from London. Um, kind of back and forth like that. Like, a few weeks ago, I was there. It's a few weeks ago, like a couple yeah. months ago, I was there. I, I had like a private gig there. I went on Saturday morning. I came back on Monday night. I went to Bangladesh for a, you know for a day and a half, yeah. and, and I could do that because it was you know just yeah. took like a. Took a cheap flight when I yeah, did, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Because yeah. if you're going from London to Bangladesh, you're probably going to stay for like yeah, a week yeah. or so, do you know what I mean? Cause that it flight... takes three days just to adjust, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? Of course, like, yeah, yeah, I can imagine, yeah. And how like, long is the flight from here? From here, direct takes about 11 hours. Um, from... and, and if you do a stopover, it's like 14 hours, yeah. 15 hours. And so from on. Dubai? From Dubai, it's like three, four hours, oh, three and a yeah, half, four, depending on yeah. what flight you're taking. Of course, yeah, it. but that's, yeah, you can't beat that. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's sick, that's amazing. But listen, I wanted to ask you, this is something that we we've asked all our guests, so... If your life was a was a film, what would be the opening scene of that film? And it could be any part of your journey. How would you start that film? Chaos. Because it's just been a lot of things going on yeah. all at once. I feel like with me, my life kind of... So, so explain the scene to me. Um, I thought, do you know what? It's a very good question, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's not mine, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, 
almost like when something bad happens, something good happens immediately. Yeah. Or it's, there's a lot of ups and downs. That's the best way I can do it. Mm. It's just like literally you, you stack your car and then you walk out and you find a bag of cash. Like that's basically, yeah. that's been a lot of what's been going on in my life. I've had a lot of good and a lot of challenges, but like I always feel like things always work out for the best anyway. Mm. Like, like I, I believe I, I believe in whatever's, you know, whatever's for me is written for me. And it's, like it's, it, it's already been written, yeah. you know, so, um, you know, the struggle... At the end, at the end of the tunnel, there's always light in it. So, yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. that's that's how I describe my scene. You stack your car and then you you get out of your car and then you find a bag of cash. That's, that's I like that. Scene. I wish that's never <laughs> that's happened that's to me. I, I get out of my car, <laughs> stepping shit or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, that, yeah. that'll be the opening scene of my f- <laughs> of my film. Will be some dead film boy. Yeah. Like five man will watch it. Yeah. But yeah, no, okay, okay. So let's let's start at the at the, at the top here, innit? So um. What made you even get into music? Like, how did that come about? So I've been singing since I was five years old. Mm. Now, a lot of people might find it hard to believe, but t- to be fair, it's one of those things that I would, I would definitely say my parents kind of got me into like singing, you know, like cult- Bengali cultural yeah. stuff, like from early. Um, those that know, like, you know, uh, they, they're part of like these cultural societies that kind of practice like arts and literature and stuff like that. My, and bear in mind, my, my parents are not, music people mm. like my dad he's got a decent voice actually he can sing but he's never been a singer he's just one of those guys that like you know it's like a it's just like a it's like a passion he likes it yeah he's never ever like performed or anything like that he might like you know pop up at a family wedding and just grab the mic and sing a couple of songs yeah, yeah, yeah. but other than that like no one's really been into music like that but they've been appreciated of like arts and culture yeah so i think from the beginning they kind of always wanted me to delve into it and see whether it was something that I connected with, whether it's something that resonated with me. And I think it did at a young age. I think what happened is I always kind of done it on like both ends of the spectrum, the kind of East meets West kind of thing. Yeah. So I've always done it in like Bengali, then I always done it in English because at the end of the day, I'm still born and raised in London. Of course. You know, so I always had that culture of music. And when I was growing up, like grand music was underground. You know, yeah. and it, and it's crazy because that's something that's like not even you might not even associate that with the kind of music that I release or put out. But the truth is, where I grew up has been a melting pot of so many different cultures and so mm. many different um, inspirations that like naturally my music was just like this fusion of like bare shit. Like yeah. <laughs> there was just so many things going on. Yeah, I had the uh, I had obviously the the roots of my Bengali and the South Asian stuff, and at the same time I had the Ed. I, I like to call it the London edge. Mm. You know, if you're from London, you've got a certain, you've got a certain edge about you on a music, music perspective. You've got a certain kind of finesse when it comes to music. Your, your listening ship of music is a little bit different. And back in those days... Do you days, think so? I'd, you know what? I think... I, not so much now, but back in the days, yeah. yeah. Why I say back in the days is, like, if you knew about a certain artist... I remember back in the days, there was a thing. Like, if you knew about a certain artist, mm. you were like, you'd immediately make friends with people. It's like, oh, do you listen to it? Oh yeah, 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 true, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I listen. I, like, in you know, that I, sense, yeah. Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely, I remember um, that. In so I felt like that that had a little bit of an edge. Yeah. And yeah, like obviously now music is so much more accessible. Like back in the days, we were like, you know, buying CDs. I said buying CDs. We yeah, I remember more, that way. We were doing like, you know, 99p yeah, singles. All of the, yeah, all of those yeah. 99p singles. Some of them were, you know, not legit as well. Yeah, you know, of course. Yeah, yeah, talking yeah. about how how it was back in the days with the whole limeware and all that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, like we, and, and if you had the tune, you'd like share it, you know, like send yeah, it to someone yeah. on Bluetooth. Yeah, like, yeah. Hey, send me that tune. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're there, the whole class. Yeah, it takes the whole everyone's class. Like, everyone's taking the song off you. instant, bro. They don't know yeah. the struggles, you know. Trust me. Bro, back, back in the days was mad. Yeah, good back times days, though. Yeah, it was crazy, man. Yeah. Sony, Sony Ericsson, Walkman phones. Uh, come on, stuff, he, yeah, he knows, he yeah, knows. Yeah, so, me. so uh, I'm just get, I'm giving away my age as well, you know. Nah, <laughs> listen, you and me both, don't yeah. worry, bro. I was with you. And I think just coming from that culture of music, I kind of learned like, I kept my ear to the street yeah. and keeping my ears to the street not only gave me like a, not only made me understand what was like popular amongst street culture, but also made me understand what's going on in the rest of the world. And also made me very open-minded with music because at the end of the day, I remember like when I was like 14, 14 to like 17, I would say, yeah, mm. that was a really interesting period for music for me because I'm a singer. And when I was 14 growing up in Leighton, East London, you know, 
and singing, not everyone kind of looked at it and then yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, you sing It oh, wasn't the cool thing to do. The cool thing to do yeah, was be a rapper. Nah, it's true. So obviously I tried spitting some bars as well, yeah. you know. How'd that go? And everyone, I was all right. Yeah. I was okay. Yeah, right. I, tell you what, I was okay. all right. Yeah, I was yeah. all right. You know, I, I don't want to call myself a rapper because that would that would discredit some of the, <laughs> I don't want to disrespect some of the rappers that I know that are, you know, that have yeah, serious yeah. pen game. But I was, I, I, I was, was all right. Was, yeah, you could hold your own. I could hold my own. Now, singing has always been the main thing. But that was a transitional period where I was at like, do you know what? Do I go for it and go for singing? Or I'm like, am I backing, backing away from it because it wasn't seen as the cool thing to do? And that was when I really kind of went a bit headstrong with it, especially the Bengali stuff. So can you imagine at 14, 15 growing up now, I'm a teenager and I'm singing in Bengali. People were like, yo, like, but, it was, but it's almost like all the mandem that I knew, all the people that, I, like, that kind of fuck with me on the music level, they're like, oh, no, you know what? Ratings to niche because he's actually like flexing it. He's not ashamed of it. Mm. And deep down, I guess I was a bit embarrassed of it. I wouldn't say ashamed, but just a bit embarrassed because I was worried, of, you know, what people think or whatnot. But I still just kind of went with it. I still sang. I remember doing GCSE like I did expressive arts. Uh, like I did, I, I did a GCSE in expressive arts, and one of the modules was music. And I sang like a Robin Dunat Tagore song, which is like a, a very famous poet from the region of, of, of Bengal. Okay. Um, very, very well known because he's the he's the man that wrote the Bangladesh National Anthem oh. as well as the Indian National okay. Anthem that currently stand today. Yeah. Wow. So he's a very, very like popular um, legend yeah. in, in the kind of literature game. I sang one of his songs and I remember all the guys that kind of like, at the beginning you see a couple, you hear a couple like laughs and whatnot and you know, but then people deep turned out, you know what? Like ratings, you like, you, you, you bodied that. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was sick. And and I think from that moment I was like, you know what, like we can make this work. And then and I just kinda carried it on now influencing like, you know, my, my hip hop and R and B upbringing and, and, and listening ship into this and then created this kind of brand of Bengali music that's so, kind of accessible. So when you first realised that you got a talent and that you can sing, yeah, your plan wasn't actually to sing in Bengali. Like it was that always the plan for you or was you, nah, was you that know just what? Like, from that school thing? It just kind of happened and it's, then you got ratings and you thought, I, okay. I never had, you know what? The maddest thing is I never actually had a plan to even be a singer. Yeah. Never even had a plan to even be a singer. Those that don't know, I have a master's in computer science. So. Oh, okay. So you went. Mad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was roots. just like, I always kind of done it as like a hobby, as like a passion. Yeah. And it was only like when I realized, hang on, like I, I did, I did my first single with, with, with my bro, Mumsy Stranger. He's another artist that kind yeah. of took me under his wing at the beginning and kind of he was a, he's a Bengali artist like two he's got he's come similar backgrounds to me yeah and he kind of took me under the wing and once i realized that that single that i did with him popped off and it was in bangla i was like yo there's a market here, i think yeah. i'm onto something yeah. here so then it just went from there and before that i didn't really i just kind of done it on like a you know i had like monitor speakers i could use logic pro i'd make beats i just do it for fun you know how like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you just do it like as like a, you don't really think yeah, anything yeah, of it. you I get like that fruity loops on your computer yeah, yeah exactly like that. exactly Zoom, did you ever do that no. fruity loops i had that but i don't know what i was doing boy. but your fruit loops was a joke you just press bare button that's what i was doing I was, I, was, I, was, I was basically i was playing street fighter on fruity loops <laughs> i was doing <laughs> hadoukens and that <laughs> i was yeah. doing madness to be fair a lot of man started on some fruity loops yeah, 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 yeah a lot of man started on fruity loops but yeah it's one of those things i just kind of always always had it I always kind of had it as as a passion. I always wanted to be, you know, and the maddest thing is it was one of those extracurricular things. Mm. You know, like extracurricular clubs when you're in school and whatnot. I used yeah. to run a music studio in school. Imagine a school in Leighton, yeah? It was so funny. My music teacher, I I had the trust to get the key to the music studio. No one else. Because what was happening is <laughs> they were giving it out and people were just wrapping up all the gear inside there. Oh, yeah. So I was just like... And, and, and she had faith in you then? She had faith in yeah. me. And she was like, do you know what? You know what it is? She goes, they listen to you. The people listen to you. Yeah. So if you go in there and be like, I remember I had a couple of brothers that were doing like music course work in there. And like, hey, so how much does mic cost here? Yeah? How much these speakers yeah, cost? Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, listen, bro, allow it, innit? Yeah, like, it, because yeah. it's on, it's on me now. Yeah, well. It's on me now, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And to be fair to them, they were like, you know what? All right, cool. Do you, like, feel, do you feel, sorry to cut you, do you feel nice, that cool. you studying music helped your music career? In 100%. 100%. I did music for GCSE and music for A level. Mm. And I think that helped me understand like the world of music theory. And that's something that not a lot of artists in today, in today's kind of age, understands like that. You like chords and you know, like progressions, cadences. Yeah. You know, back in the days, I used to be able to like semi sight read sheet music. I can't do it now, like, because I'm so out of practice. But also, like, learning how to play keys, you know, picking up the guitar. I think that just 
kind of enhances your creativity in yeah. the music studio. Because don't get me wrong, there's some there's some amazing beat makers out there that probably ain't got no music theory, but they're clever in the sense of like especially in this day and age, they'll come up with like a plugin that can do like a cool progression. But they kind of get where it's supposed to fit and where it's supposed to go. Just by sound. Like Just they by can kind of feel it out. And that itself is a talent, to That's be no, fair. 100%, yeah. That's a mad talent. Of course. Yeah. I feel for me I'm a little bit more old school in the sense of I understand music, so I'm like I'd rather play it in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I use some samples here and there, but like I like playing my shit in because I can just because I can. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that definitely help. It helps a lot when it comes to singing and melody writing as well, mm. because a lot of people don't understand that although songwriting isn't just writing lyrics, it's a big massive part of it is writing a melody or of a song because sometimes a melody can ride the record more so than the lyrics. I've heard some songs where people are talking gibberish, bro. But that melody. Sold that it. Yeah, yeah. Sold it. Like, mad melody. Yeah. Always catchy. Not even talking, like, talking smack in the record, bro. You know what's crazy? You know, whenever you watch, like, a random video, like, an old, of, like, any artist, like, from yeah. back in the day, and you can see them, like, their thought process of, like, a hit song they had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they always start with, like, the chorus or, like, the melody, like you said. And then eventually, they're just like, uh, 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 and then those, uh, 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 turn into actual Legit. words. Yeah. You know what's so funny? Zoops, you've seen it in the studio. How many yeah. times have you seen us record in the studio? And I'm not saying, I, I promise you, I swear to God, I'm not saying any words. I'm just like, na, 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 na. and I'm just like saying like random gibberish yeah. stuff. And then it's so funny because when you hear it at first, you're like, what are you talking about? But then all I do is I take that and I write the lyrics to that. And then like, that's how you yeah, I love song. watching that process though. That process Bro, you know, is... It's crazy that I was talking about. You know, like back in the days, so we used to just play some music and this, just go on to the, uh, the, um, the, the guitar or even a keyboard and he'll play the song and that's you it. just listen to it that's us yeah that's a talent phone. bro to, to, that's to a be talent. fair that's a to be fair do you know what like again from learning music like one of the one of the like kind of things that we're tested on as well is like how good your ear is and how good your tuning is so yeah. for example if i hear something like i'll be like oh that's in like a c, that's in a c major key like oh okay cool so if this sounds like that yeah oh, okay i'm playing stuff in a c major key these are the notes so if it sounds like that, you kind of able to Has figure it, got a it name out when people can have that ability to like hear a song or hear a beat and then they know what keys it is of so that that people that are i think correct me listeners and viewers if yeah. i'm wrong there's a percentage of people that are pitch perfect that's what if I've you're heard, pitch, yeah, pitch perfect yeah. if you hear something like uh, any of you guys seen charlie poof's videos yeah, Charlie yeah, Poof yeah. is pitch perfect. Yeah, so like, yeah. there's a thing on when he's like Jimmy Fallon or something, and he hits like a a mug, and he goes, "Oh, that's a G," and he's just like, and he gets it straight away. Yeah, and he goes, yeah, yeah. pulls out the keyboard, and he starts playing. Like someone yeah, like him, yeah. that's beast. That that's that's mad. Yeah. Like that, there's a certain percentage of people in the world, a very small percentage that are pick, pitch perfect. Yeah. I'm not pitch perfect, but I've got pretty decent pitch. So, mm. I guess that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. Cause. Growing up, like we used to watch, like, I, I used to watch Ryan Leslie, and I like. He's a mad influence for me, anyway. Yeah, yeah, and I can see like what Nish does, like on the key mm. and on any instrument, he will just play it and get the sound right. Yeah, yeah. and bro, that, uh, that's who you remind me of. Ryan, Ryan Leslie's Leslie. one of my biggest inf inspirations. Like legit, I used to watch like from him is when I started to like, you know, like understand the layers of making beats, understand the composition of mm. a song how a song is kind of put together, how he gets the guitar, plays the guitar, how he like plays the drums in. And also the sick thing about him, he was a singer and a rapper and a producer. Yeah. So I was just like, oh, if he can do it. Cause at, that, at one point I was like, oh, do I got to pick one? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, and at yeah, that yeah. point when you're new, it don't really matter. It's kind of go with whatever works for you, whatever feels good, whatever sounds good. And, and, and definitely he was like a big inspiration in, in, for me as an artist. So wait, how many instruments can you play then? For me? Yeah. So, Jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can play like, I can play like guitar, piano, uh, drums. Uh, I can play tabla, which is like a South Asian instrument. Okay. Um, harmonium, which is another South Asian instrument. But like I said, I can play yeah, all of them to a certain well, standard. But I wouldn't say, oh my god, yeah, like man's gonna bang a solo. Yeah, the fact I'm that you gonna, can play all that, bro. Bro, I bought a guitar in lockdown. Yeah. With the intentions, I said, you know what? I've always wanted to learn how to play any instrument. And I just thought, all right, guitar it is. To this day, I haven't touched it. Pick it up, I, man. No, I tuned it. That's a lie. I tuned it. I went on YouTube, 
figured out how to tune it. Like, bro, that took me like two hours. That's what I said, yeah, this is taking way too long. To be fair, <laughs> at least at least the first guitar that I tuned, bro, I broke like three strings from right. just like thing. So uh, I you did a better job than me. I had YouTube, I was, fo- I was following the video, bro. It took me like two hours. I said, yeah, this ain't for me, boy. But I still want to do it slightly. It's, it's just sitting there, picking yeah. up dust. You pick it up, man. You get no, I still want to do it. I still want to do it, man. Yeah, man. I but find it hard to learn that like, instruments and stuff like that, bro. That just, my ears is not for that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do, do you know what's mad, Zoobs? When I was in school, I remember you st- like the whole learning thing. I don't know if you guys can relate to this as mm. well. But maybe when I was younger, like my attention span was so like short when it comes to learning. I just didn't yeah. want to learn. I was like, oh yeah, you know. Because yeah. I used to pick things, like when I was in GCSE, I was like kind of smart. I used to pick it up. When I got to A-level, things went downhill because mm. I f- how smart I thought I was, I weren't that yeah, smart, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Legit, I wasn't even that smart. And then I was trying to pick it back up at uni again. But at this age that I'm at now, I feel like now I want to learn. I want to learn things. And it's almost like you're, I'm, I'm trying to pick up for lost time. Like even the other day, like, like last couple of months, I did a two week crash course of just like trying to learn how to grade on DaVinci Resolve, for, for, yeah. which is like a video editing software. Okay. And I didn't like, and I had to, and I sat down and I really wanted to do it. Same thing but with again, guitar. It, sorry to cut you. Is this all because these are these are things that you're actually interested in? Yes. Whereas in school, yeah, they're yeah. just subjects that you just think, yeah. history is cool. Oh, actually, no, I liked history, but let's say geography. Yeah. I was like, bro, what, what am I going to use? <laughs> Like, what, do what do I need to know? Like, nah, I hear that. Where no the disrespect like, to all the geography, man. No, nah, no, nah, you shout out the geography shout teachers. Out, but, shout out the geography teachers. But, but yeah, but. for me at that time, I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to use this information. So like, yeah. and then obviously sim- sim- similar to what you said, you just lose kind of attention and then you just carry on. Yeah. I feel like my attention span yeah. that, it, it, for, for other stuff was just like mad short. It's only for like the creative stuff, like art, you know. I was good at maths. That's mm. like, you know, I feel like that's yeah. like a... That's like a brown boy thing, innit? That Asian thing, <laughs> yeah. Asian To be fair, thing, it was, yeah. even in my school, I was, was good at maths. I found maths like very black and white, innit? So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was good at it. But no, I'm yeah. allergic to maths, boy. <laughs> I'm allergic to it, I'll I'm tell you that. allergic to yeah, maths. Yeah, I'm allergic. Yeah. So I was going to say, after your first single, like, how did you feel of the feedback that you got from having like the first, that Bengali song, like UK, Bangla? So I think, again, in my, in my humble opinion, the Bengali audience were probably waiting for an artist like me to come along. Yeah. And, 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 and I say this with the most humility than anything else because I don't want to sound like I'm like blowing my own trumpet, but at the same time, I, I was looking for something like that for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and there's been some amazing artists, don't get me wrong, in, in, the, in the Bangla music scene that have done sick things before me, yeah. right? But I just felt like I needed to kind of represent my own kind of upbringing of of a mixed di- a diverse kind of music listenership, the m- mixed crowd, and just someone to represent someone that was like me, grew up in London, you know, East London boy, grew up, had a mixed bag of friends, you know, black, white, Asian, you name it, but also listened to like a whole bunch of music, like listening to like you know, grime, French rap, yeah. R and B, mm. pop, you know, ballad stuff, as as well as Bengali folk as well as yeah, Bollywood, yeah. as well as Punjabi, just to kind of merge that together and just kind of have, have like someone to, to, be, to be that guy basically yeah, yeah. for Bengalis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I felt like I, I'm quite proud of what I've achieved since 2015. Yeah. I feel like sometimes I don't, I don't deep it enough yeah. because, you know, getting the first Bengali, first song of Bengali language on the iTunes number one was like, my first album was the first Bengali album on the iTunes number one. You know, my first debut single charted number nine in the UK That's charts. Amazing, like, bro. And 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 sometimes That's you know amazing. what? And, and Zoobs, you always tell this to. I, I sometimes don't deep it. Like some some of the things that I done because at the end of the day, at the beginning of my career, all I wanted to do was just be a voice for Bengalis. Yeah. And and be like, I just wanted to put us on the map like yeah. that. You know. Now there's you know I watch there's Bengali artists everywhere, which is great. Yeah. And and just someone that could represent like the N- NRB and NRB basically mean non- non-resident Bengali someone that's like of Bengali heritage but like born and raised outside of Bangladesh so it could be m- yeah, myself yeah. from London people from the rest of the UK yeah. there's mad Bengalis in Italy I don't know if you man seen oh, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. mad Bengalis in Italy okay. in Europe America Canada yeah. you know we're all over the gaff yeah. Australia New Zealand so I just wanted to be that person that's you know bridging the gap between you know mm. yeah like we, we live in a western world but at the same time we still kind of hold our values as well and yeah that's kind of where, where i wanted to be with it and yeah. i felt like if if i deep it if i quit tomorrow i can say job well done i can give myself a pat on the back 
Because although I'm not the biggest artist, bro, by any stretch, I'm not the you know the most popular artist. I might not be the most talented artist, but I feel like what I've done is commendable. Do you know what I mean? I feel like at least I c at least if I quit tomorrow, if I if I pack it in tomorrow, or if I'm no longer doing music tomorrow, people will be like, you know what? Like he stood for us. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And also, but what you just said is like those metrics. It's all subjective. Yeah. So you might be someone's most popular artist. Correct. To yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? So. It's one of them things where if you've reached like it's like when we when we do this pod right we, we ain't got mad numbers we don't do like crazy views but i've always come with, with my, my intention is if it's just hits one or two people yeah. that resonate with it and they learn something from it or benefit i'm happy I'm with happy, that yeah. yeah i've never ever sat here thinking oh man the, the views are low or whatever but more time they probably are aren't it but I, at the I, same go on. So, sorry to come no, no, I, I, I always said this as well like and i always kind of kept the mindset is bro i'd rather have a thousand loyal followers yeah. that like all my posts that comment on my posts yeah. then have a hundred thousand people that just swipe past do you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah. so what, like like you were saying yeah what, like, what was your biggest um in terms of numbers your biggest song i got a one record which is probably on about if it's on 15 million streams on spotify alone probably got another five million on apple music so I let, let's say around 20 20 plus million on dsps and 60 million on youtube that's and that song, which is crazy because that's it's a mad anomaly. Bonkers, isn't it? It's a mad anomaly. Yeah, that's bonkers, bro. Honestly, yeah. yeah. To think that many people, bro, I get gas when like <laughs> we get a thousand views and I'm thinking, hey, you, mama, you know, I made it. I'm, I'm <laughs> not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Like, I didn't expect that. I didn't have any kind of expectation for it. It's just one of those things that organically grew. Mm. And what happened is it went super viral on TikTok. But you know what the kicker is? Yeah. Imagine when, my, when that tune went viral on TikTok, man didn't even have a TikTok account. I didn't even know what TikTok was. Oh. Can you believe that? So you didn't even monetize. I didn't even monetize none of that. I'm just <laughs> no, like, no, I took missed, a fat L. You missed the trick there. I missed the maddest trick. But, but again, it's things happen for so a reason. What I came guess, with yeah. that? With, with that an amount of views? What did your life change in terms of like getting I, recognized I would, I would more? Say, yeah, I think what that did is it opened the door in like different parts of mm. the world, not just Bangladesh, because it was basically like a cover slash mashup of like a Bollywood song that I done in English, Bengali, and Hindi. I think it was Hindi or Punjabi, one of the, yeah. like, someone correct me if I was wrong. Mm. Um, I did it in like a mashup of languages. Yeah. And I realized just a bag of people from different parts of the world rated it. They're like, oh, this is sick. You know, I saw this on TikTok. Then you got people, you know, from all over the world, like a lot of people from India. I got mad people from like North Africa. Mm. I had people from like Brazil. Oh, I love this song. Yeah. People from South Korea. It was on a K-pop playlist, bro. Oh, wow. And you know what the K-pop yeah, numbers yeah, are yeah, saying. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Numbers are crazy. So I was just yeah. like, yo, like, this is mad. And people are like, oh, I don't understand like, half the song, but I love the first bit because it's English. Yeah. And then you got people from India saying, hey, yo, you know, I fuck with the second part of the song because it's in <laughs> yeah. India. I got people from Bangladesh. Oh, my God, I love the third verse. It's in Bengali. <laughs> and then the rest of the world. So are like, everyone oh, I love can resonate English. with a little part of I that song. I felt like it worked. Yeah. And it was one of those things that I didn't even have any, any expectation of it. And I always say, like, it was one of those things where. I, I call it a blessing and a curse. A blessing because there was like mad love from it. I can't even lie. Like mm. the most love I've ever got was from that tune. But also a curse in the sense of I didn't want that song to define me as well. Yeah. Because if you was to ask me if that song's in my top five songs of my own songs that I rate or like I like listening to, I wouldn't even put it in top 10. Really? Which is mad that because is. as an artist, yeah. we don't know what's going to bang. Of course. We yeah. don't know what's going to pop. And sometimes we might think, oh yeah, you know what? I've got a banger. I'm going to drop it tomorrow, it's going to pop. And when that doesn't do well, yeah. you can sometimes get disheartened by it. And sometimes, like again, like this song is called Standing By You. I could put it out with no expectation. I didn't even have a proper music video to it. I was just walking around in Washington Square Park in New York with some lyrics over it. I just got one of my brethren to film it. How and mental then, was that? And, and, you're, crazy. and you're talking about... I didn't even have a visual to it. Yeah, views. 60 million views. And I was just like... It's mental. Why did I not shoot a video to this? I'm so stupid. But again, but then, you, you never... I think we we had a Scorcher on last week. Yeah. And he was saying... And I know you've, you've got... Yeah, man, you two yeah, got yeah. a song together as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a bad boy tune, by the way. But yeah, he was saying a similar thing to what you were saying, which is he made he makes songs for himself that he likes. Yeah. So he doesn't ever put out music thinking, all right, this might do numbers. He does what he feels like. This is what I want to do in this moment. This is what I respect a lot about people like Scorcher yeah. as well, because Scorcher is obviously one of the OGs in 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 in, in that scene. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But also, I think that makes you an artist with integrity. The reason I say that is, of course, man, and like, and ratings to the to the people that follow trends and all that stuff, because they're making their own bag and they're doing what they need to yeah. do. Obviously, times are a bit different in music now. You know, I came from the bit where it was kind of crossing over from CDs to like. DSPs and streaming and stuff Digital, back in the yeah. days trying to sell CDs bro it was 
it was oh, not it. Like, it was long. Yeah, it was long, bro. People yeah, were yeah. outside, you know, Camden, Camden Station giving giving out the, the, yeah, the CDs yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, for me, I was kind of trans in the transitional period. But I always kind of said to myself, striking a balance between making songs that you know might commercially work. Because mm. you have to... I think I think it's it would be wrong as me as a as a pop artist because technically that's what I am in it. I'm a pop artist. I'm a pop singer, right? Because I'm trying to I'm trying to make popular music. Yeah. If if I'm if I'm gonna ignore sometimes what's on trend or what people want to hear or what the radios are playing, I think that's a mistake on my end too. But at the same time, it's trying to find the balance between making shit that I know I like mm. and also making shit that you might might be commercially viable because at the end of the day bro this is what we do full time we gotta eat facts right yeah, yeah of course we gotta eat um and i feel like i've managed to strike a decent balance don't get me wrong there's been times where some songs have failed to kind of reach the expectation yeah and that's cool we move on to but the that's next a one part of any endeavor in life. life yeah man yeah, anything you do in life like you're gonna have highs lows you're gonna have failures wins l's w's whatever you want to call it but yeah, that doesn't also define you in it. So yeah, and and coming back onto what you was the point that you were making about mm. making songs that you like as well, and I think it's equally important to have that stamp. And one of the biggest things as an artist, what's really interesting, and really like a, I believe is like a special skill, is to stamp your identity on a song, from just people listening to it. So yeah. if I'm an artist and I play you a song, you can kind of figure out what I'm about, just by listening to one of my tunes. Yeah, that itself is an art, and I think if you can get that right then listeners can be like, yo, they can really fuck with him and be like, you know what? This person's real. Yeah, like, no, you're, you're not you're not out here just trying to jump on trends or yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. know, because a lot of people are doing that. Yeah, of course. There's a lane yeah. for that, isn't it? Like, like you said, some people are just in it for the for the money. So yeah. if something's hot and it's a current trend. Brother, if I was in it for the money, yeah, I would have left a long time ago, hey, bro. Because yeah. music don't... <laughs> hey, bring me in, bro. Hey, hey, this, nah, not even that, bro. Let me feature, bro. <laughs> not, not even that, bro. Music, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not all It's not all rosy, bro. It's not, yeah, the grass imagine. ain't always greener. Sometimes we, we question ourselves because, you know, we, we, we battle through physical, mental, just to kind of yeah. do what we yeah. love doing. No, of course. Yeah. But yeah, man. So, you know, after that, doing uh, Standing By You, after that, did you get a lot of bookings? I think do you know what it is like yeah? globally because I, I get a lot I get a lot of private get a lot of like private functions like sorry let me just adjust no, myself yeah, um I get like a lot of private functions like whether it be weddings whether it be like um birthday parties and stuff and to be fair I I know a lot of artists are indifferent they're a little bit 50 50 about it. I know some people don't like doing private functions because a little bit like well me like I'll be real with you like if the numbers are numbers in, then yeah, I'll yeah, do it. Yeah. And also, it, it, I think it allows me to travel as well. And I think some of the things that have been so great about doing like private functions, whether it's like in the, in the States or whether it's like in Europe or any part of the world in Bangladesh or wherever, mm -hmm. is that it's allowed me to travel and kind of like away from just the function. I'll do like, I'll, I'll travel for like a week. And those days leading up to a function, I might hop in the studio with an artist. I might go and see things. I might go and experiment on, you know, what people are listening to do market research and I just think experiences man it makes the it makes the artist so whether it's just the the private function yeah. and the private function for me that bro that's just that's feeding me in it of course yeah. at the end of the day yeah. you know that's feeding me so if I'm doing like a few of those yeah ev every every few months like of what's course, the yeah. you, know, I ha you know I can I can put it towards I can put it towards the new music and stuff. So yeah, exactly. I know. see Justin Bieber doing a private function. But you see what he did at that Ambani thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, I <laughs> he got paid that. racks, bro. But that's what I'm saying. Even he does private events, though. Do you know what I mean? He did. So there's this wedding, the Ambani wedding, which is like a massive thing in India. Okay. Yeah. That brother that had like Kim Kardashian and Boris Johnson. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen. Oh, with his like, yeah, bro, I was mad. Everyone, everyone under the sun was yeah. in yeah. India. Oh, for every, this wedding. Yeah. Every was there. Yeah, and apparently he's just paying off everyone. Apparently he was paying money's people M's just to be there, yeah. Yeah, that's mad. Which is crazy, isn't yeah, it? I was mad. just like, yo, I should have rolled up, bro. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Did you get an invite? I think I got no invite, bro. <laughs> no way, bro. I got Next no year. invite, bro. I'm not that important. But listen, I wanted to ask you something, <laughs> so I wanted to change lanes a little bit, yeah, because I know, yeah, um, and it's a personal one, so yeah, I hope you don't sure, mind. Man. Um, so I, I know in 2020, I believe you got diagnosed with um, chronic myeloid leukemia. Yeah, man. Like the one? So 2020, man. Mad, yeah. Yeah. Obviously COVID and everything here. Mm. And then, um, yeah, I was diagnosed with uh, chronic myeloid leukemia in November 2020, which was mad because, like, I didn't even know. I had it six months prior to my diagnosis, but yeah. I just lost mad weight. I think Zoob, you, you, yeah, you, yeah. like, obviously, Zoob's nose, he's yeah, been he's around. Been in and around yeah, he's yeah. been in and around every, everything. And um, 
I lost mad weight, bro. I was yeah. like mad stick thin, but I didn't think anything of it. I was just ga- kind of, and you know, sometimes. But you felt okay, like. Oh, I can't even lie. I didn't even feel okay. I can't. Okay. I can't lie. I was kicking ball. Yeah. Was I kicking ball yeah. one day? And bro, I threw up. Threw and up, everyone, yeah. everyone made like a laugh, yeah, like thinking, joke oh, about yeah, it. Like, yeah, unfit, unfit, unfit or, or whatever. Yeah. And, and I, I swear to God, I went and I'm fit. I'm like, I'm not a bad footballer. I wouldn't say I'm the greatest, but oh, I can, I can yeah, play. You can, like, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I went a couple of sessions and I kept throwing up, and like, and it kept happening every. Yeah, yeah, like any even, physical activity yeah. would make like me Even throw gym, up. I think. Like after a gym, gym yeah. yeah I went like, gym because yeah. I got like like proper skinny, like yeah. skinny to a point that everyone was like, "Yo, are you good?" Like, yeah, yeah. Like what? Yeah. Go on. I was like, "No, I'm just on a diet." So what happened was, so for six months I couldn't really eat properly. Yeah. So I'd have like, imagine I'd have like one spoon or something, and I'd feel full. But what was happening is um, my spleen kept enlarging. Yeah. So spleen, I didn't even know it was an organ that's like next to your stomach it was enlarging and taking the place of my stomach yeah. so it was displacing the area of my stomach so my stomach was shrinking where yeah. my spleen was growing and what was happening is how leukemia works i don't know if you you're familiar with i had to read up about it, it it's I'll be basically honest. when your white blood cells basically start that, that it's something called an onco cell so those are the cancer cells okay. that keep keep reproducing rapidly and your white blood cells end up these like so white blood cells are basically supposed to battle infection and fight diseases yeah. and stuff but these onco cells are white blood cells that kind of take up space and don't really do anything. Mm. And it's caused by the Philadelphia chromosome, which is mad because there's no reasoning behind it. There's no like explanation. It just happens. It's weird. Like, you know, like, Allah's will, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you're, you, you know, yeah, the Muslim written, religion, yeah, yeah. I, I, it's written. That's the, that's yeah. the way I believe. And it's something anyway. you inherit. It's not even something. It's that not even nothing you inherit. Oh, it's just nothing you inherit. Nothing. It just it can happen. Some to people get some. some it's, like doctor said that. I asked them. So what, what happened? They're like yeah. started getting struck by lightning. It could yeah. happen to anyone. It could be caused by anything. It could be caused by. It's the same. It's like very rare. When I was reading, ab- reading it, it, it's, about it, it, do you know what's mad? I thought it was rare, but it's a bit more common in people than I than I than I kind of clock. But yeah, like. I had to undergo like intensive treatment from the get-go because obviously I was six months in in November mm. and when I went by the time I went to the hospital I remember kind of being diagnosed and being sat in the room and when I'll be real with you you kind of hear about cancer and stuff like yeah. that but you don't really deep it until it kind of comes you know you know the first time you heard it from the doctor like I didn't believe him yeah I thought he was chatting I'm not gonna so lie. Mis- not even that. I just kind of like, like. I was like, yeah. not even that. I was just like, yeah, like, not even not want to believe him. I just kind of said, you know, you don't register it. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. one of those things. Like, you know, like you think to yourself, like you'd break down and this and that. Legit, I didn't even register it. It flew past my head. I was mm. like, you, you saying I got cancer? He's like, yeah. I was like, alright, cool. So, like, wh- what do I do? Mm. That's the first thing I said. Well, yeah, I said, what do I do? And they were like, and it didn't. I didn't deep it. I didn't deep it. And did. It's only when I went outside and I saw my brother, and my brother's outside, I said, what happened, what happened? And I told him, that's when obviously like I, I, I broke down, I was emotional. Um, yeah, yeah. I think the emotions kind of hit me like an hour later. Mm. But then what I kind of said to myself from that moment was the doctor was like, look, we can treat it kind of thing. And as soon as they said that, I'm the kind of, I'm an optimist in, in that respect. I feel like if they say something like that, I'm going to latch on to it. Like, if you're, like for example, if you're like telling me, oh, yeah, like, oh, come do this for me. And then at the end, oh, you'll get that. I will latch on to the fact that I'll get that and then do everything. That's your Just, driving force. That's my driving. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm very driven in that, in that respect. Mm. So w- w- when they said, yo, yeah, we can fix it or we can treat it. I was like, All right, cool, I'm just going to go off that. And I remember I couldn't even tell my mum, man. Like imagine, uh, imagine yeah, hearing from your... Conversation your, must yeah, be, yeah, that's a mad con- Like my brother had to tell like my family and everyone because... Yeah. Like I couldn't process it myself. I feel like I needed to kind of not show emo. I, I couldn't show grief or emotion to like my parents because imagine like, do you know what I mean? Like imagine yeah, hearing yeah. it. I just kind of had a co- phone conversation with my mom saying that like I need everyone's strength because right now I I am not strong. So I need everyone to kind of lend me their strength. And my mom said it straight. She goes, "Ah, right, cool. If you're not, if you're strong about it, I'm gonna be strong about it. If my son's saying." It can be fixed. I'm going to believe yeah. it. My mum just, she started praying. She was just like, I'm going to pray. Yeah. I'm not going to pick up the call from no one. I know a lot of people are going to call. And the thing is, she goes, I appreciate a lot of people kind of calling and finding out, but that's going like, to, that's going to fuck with me. Like, I'm yeah, not yeah, really yeah. going to, she's like, I, like, you know, someone might say something and, and our community a little bit like, OTT, we're a bit emotional. Yeah, so. It's coming from a good place, but at the same time, yeah. it's, yeah. She, like, her thing was like, I'm just going to block it out and just make mm. sure that my son's treatment's good. So yeah, man, I had intensive treatment, man. Like I lost lost hair and all of that stuff. Mm. I was um I was taking like 
chemotherapy medication. So my chemotherapy was was a little bit different because like oral chemo, mm. so it's all tablets. And boy, like pff, when you take like twelve tablets a day, man, yeah. they do a lot to you. But alhamdulillah, I can't complain. Like I, w- mm. I, I, I actually went into cytogenetic remission last year on the day of Arafah. So that day, mm. like you know, before yeah. Eid al Adha, which was which was a blessing, obviously. And it was just a, it was a constant, constant kind of battle that. I had, like you said, like you have good days, you have bad days, yeah. isn't it, man? Anyone that's ca- anyone that had cancer kind of knows, isn't it? Mm. Um, you have good days, you have bad days. You got days where you feel like, you know what, yeah, man, I feel good, and you got days where like, bro, like, oh, I feel mash up, yeah. like, and 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 that's just the way it went. And and how know, long did that period, like, how long did that feeling last? From two thousand and like the first like kind of six months of two, from the point I got diagnosed, I was like bed bound, yeah. And then that was prime COVID season as well. Then I ended up getting diagnosed with COVID as well. Mm. So I was really worried because my immune system was really bad, yeah. and that was a time where a lot of people were like losing their lives as well doing yeah, COVID. Yeah. So everyone was really worried, and I was worried, and you know I was constantly in and out of the hospital. But for those six months, then slowly as my health started mm. getting a bit better, my you know my cell count kind of went down, my eating started to kind of realign itself. I was you know, enjoying food again, which was great. Yeah. Putting weight on a little yeah, bit, looking yeah. a bit healthy. Yeah. Started running, started doing this and that. I think slowly, like, and then in 2020, was it 23? Yeah, 2023, yeah. Day of Arafa, um, I was, they, they gave me the all clear, I had a test and they go, yeah, man, you've got the, you're in cytogenetic remission. Um, so I'm still on medication now and I still see the doctor, obviously, because mm. well, how it works is the percentage of the cell reaches a percentage where it kind of is untraceable. Yeah. But in order for it to kind of remain under control, I need to keep banging those medication once a day. So I take a tablet. And is once that for life? Day. That's until, until you okay. Uh, until they say otherwise. Yeah. So yeah, man, just trying to juggle everything with that, and that's also kind of why I kind of took a little bit of a step back with music because I'll be real with you, man. There was a lot of questions going through my head at the time. Of course, naturally. Yeah. I didn't want to. I don't know. I I was at a point when when I kind of thought. Is it something, is music the career that I w- want to pursue at the end of the day? You know, do I want to quit? Do I want to stop? What not? Yeah. And I felt like... And obviously us being Muslim and then you yeah, going through yeah, that yeah. test, yeah. you're starting to see life differently now. Yeah, like I, you said, I think so. I feel, I feel like even just naturally, even just away from music, I feel like I still see life differently from there 100%, as yeah. well. I, I think with music is, at the end of the day, like, I know a lot of people probably got a lot to say about it and whatnot, each to their own, but I feel like I'm just trying to do something that's, I'm not harming anyone, and you know, I'm yeah. not, I'm not trying to preach anything bad about it. I'm just trying to make tunes that it's you know outlet. people can relate to. It's my outlet, do you know what mm. I mean? And sometimes people need the outlet. Yeah. We all make mistakes. We all sin. You know, we're all human at the end of the day. Yeah. And uh, wh- whatever, whatever belief you believe in, bro, you know, there's gonna be good and bad that that you do. Yeah, no, of you course, know? yeah. Humans are humans. We're engineered to to make mistakes. So. I can only imagine like having t- like to go through something like that. Like, alhamdulillah, yeah. you know. I've never had any type of illness, but we take our health health for um, granted. Yeah. Like, cause you're just, everyone's just living on autopilot. Like you're yeah, just flying a hundred miles an hour. Then all of a sudden handbrake. Yeah. And that handbrake was it. You never even pulled the handbrake. Do, do you know what's life mad pulled well? it. Do you know what's mad? Yeah, life pulled it. And, mm. and you don't know that's going to happen to you until it does. Yeah. Cause when it don't happen to you, you're like, yeah, it's calm. Like nothing. This, you hear about it. Like I said, cancer. Oh, anyone you in your family, it. everyone else, no one, yeah. No, it, but yeah. my dad's a diabetic, yeah. but that, that's like something but, yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. kind of and also that's hereditary in our yeah, very in our culture. Yeah. Very anyway, like in our culture. Moroccans are yeah, yeah, Moroccans have it. Like it's it's, it's a common thing I think in Africa or yeah, yeah. probably all over the world. But so after mm. all of that that's happened, you got the clear. Where was your mindset at about music? Did you think about going back into it? What was like your first single? I think back? I tried. You know what it is? Even while I still had it, I tried to kind of. I tried to keep going, you know, like just kind of keep it going and keep like a, a positive mindset because what I didn't want it to happen was that I didn't want the cancer to stop me to be like, all right, now you, you're in, you're unable to do anything. I didn't want it to win. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. if I, if I stopped, it would have won, you know, like I love that though. I yeah. didn't want it to win, man. I was just like, yeah. no, nah, like I'm going to carry on with what I'm doing. Yeah, man. I got cancer. Like, but it's calm. Like, I'm like, is that going to stop me? I'm at, you know, are my, are my legs still working? Is my brain still working? Are my hands still working? Alhamdulillah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's carry on doing yeah, what yeah, I was yeah. doing. And and that's the way I looked at it. I just looked at it as like having, having like a, I don't know. I didn't look at it as like a, oh, this is completely about to stop everything that I'm doing. Yeah, my I life's would do things now. to my limit. Yeah. For example, kicking ball. I'd still go and play. But I might 
play once every two weeks and not yeah of course twice yeah, every week yeah, because yeah. i might not be able to like keep up with everyone yeah. but once every two weeks yeah man i'll put in a good shift score a couple bangers and that's it you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah yeah um and the same goes with music release when i can work when i can and rest when i can i think rest was very much needed traveling you know i travel a lot like bro even in the space of like three weeks I, I, i've been to london to new york to london to dubai back to london to bangladesh to like you know what i mean like i do a lot of air miles and that takes a toll on your body so i've just been kind of minimizing yeah, yeah. what i needed to what, what where i was traveling and prioritizing you know uh, if i'm traveling here i'm gonna make sure i'm doing this at this time doing that at ta- that time and what it helped me do is help me organize my life a lot better mm. All it was just organize my life a bit better, eat a little bit better, you know, drink a lot of water. That's one thing I never used to do. I never used to drink yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one thing a lot of people don't do. Yeah, I'm not sure. the best either. You gotta hydrate, bro. Yeah, yeah. like, do you know what I mean? And key, bro. I, I just didn't want it to stop me from from being normal. I wanted to remain normal. But that mindset to be that like mentally strong, like, mashallah, that's credit yeah, to you, bro. Because like, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people watching this, uh, going through their own things, whether it's health or just life. And it's easy to kind of feel sorry for yourself when you're the one going through it. Yeah. And it's easy to say, you know what? I just don't feel like it today. And then live in that space for X amount of time until it's, it's harder to get out of it. There's or times I felt like that, bro. Yeah. There's times for, for real, man. And the real talk, I did feel like that a lot of mm. times. But it's just, you know, to get yourself back up again, it's hard, man. You know, like to, to really, really pick yourself up. And I feel like that is not just due to me, bro. The, the thing is, I've got a lovely family around me. I've got good people around me that Inshallah. if I felt like I was down, they'll be like, no, no, you, you got it. Like, you're yeah, cool. strong support you're good. S- system. And, it, and, and if I couldn't, and the same with them, if they were feeling down about it, I'd be like, no, nah, look look at me, man. I'm all right. Yeah. It works both ways, yeah, man. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's very important. It's crazy because I was around this shit like, quite a lot and his mindset going through it, bro, he just always said, this is, this is nothing. I'll get over it. Don't worry. Like, he, like We're all like, kind of down but he was like why are you not down like let's yeah he's trying to like have jokes yeah. banner, but his mindset was so strong mm. like mashallah that it, it was the best thing to see bro like, Do you know what, what I, one of the hardest things was yeah because it was doing covid when i was in hospital i couldn't have no visitors in it yeah oh, you must so have i had i had i was in a oh. i was in a room by myself for like two weeks i couldn't even leave that room um i had i had my own room yeah. in, in St. Bart's hospital and that was sad. Like I, I was I on FaceTime yeah, with everyone, yeah, but yeah. I couldn't really see that, anyone. That's when you that can was, like mentally break. Like in yeah. that little period. That was hard though. That I was imagine, I, I yeah, would I say that was imagine, very difficult, bro. man. People I was having, like ba- having bands with like all of like the doctors and yeah, nurses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just trying to like, you know, create a good yeah. mood in, in, yeah. in the place. Yeah. I remember during COVID, people felt like that in their own bedrooms, yeah, in man. their own house with yeah, their own yeah. gadgets and like luxuries. Like imagine being in the hospital where you're worried about your health and then the world's going through this lockdown where people could even like people miss their own pregnancies isn't it? Like, yeah. as in fathers miss the, the like birth yeah, of their children and that. that's yeah, mad man. yeah so that's s- crazy. people are going through it but that's yes yeah, i can't imagine yeah. like like you say like we make sure like every day like on whatsapp we would or oh, video call and that like, you have everyone on the whatsapp video well, calls i think what, like, my brother said something to me during that time he's just like you know like the house was a really weird place because mm. a lot of people were coming in and out yeah. and whatnot but like everyone would wait for that hour, two hours when you called on FaceTime yeah, yeah. because from seeing you and having jokes with you and banter with you, everyone's like normal, everyone jumped on. Yeah. As soon as you put the phone down, it was like, you know, like a morning, how yeah. everyone was like really like solemn, really kind of like downbeat. Yeah. yeah. And and just that one hour, two hours that we were on the phone with you when you're awake and when you chat, that yeah. everyone was like, that everyone was looking forward to that. And and that's it, like, if you think about it, man, that, you know what's mad when I think about it now, like I, I can't, I don't even know how I done it. I don't even, I can't even tell you. Yeah. I can't even explain to you, like, oh, how how, how did you do it? Like, bro, I don't know. You just got a shock massive, much like, Yeah, yeah. And also, you know, when, like, when we go through those tests as humans, like, obviously, it's nothing, it's, it's something that nobody wants, but it might be something that people need. And It's mad you say that. Yeah. Because I felt like, in, in the most non, like, I felt like that is what opened my eyes a little bit, and maybe I need it. So, yeah, go on, yeah. you were saying, go on, carry yeah, on. Yeah, no, it's like, because that's the time where you can actually stop what you're doing. All that noise around you stops. And then all of a sudden you start to reflect and focus. All right, what is what is my purpose here? Like, what's, like, yeah. l- like who's my Lord? You know, like, you start reconnecting with I your religious. I patterned up after it, though. I, I can't lie, I patterned up. If, I, f- I think that, you'd I be up. crazy yeah, not to, to yeah, be honest. Like, up. you know what I'm saying? Like, when, when people go through that, it's like, my parents, alhamdulillah, always been, like, 
like praying and that. Yeah, yeah. But when my sister passed away, so obviously my parents' daughter yeah, passed yeah. away. That's when I saw the change in yeah. them reli- religiously. Yeah, yeah, it went yeah. from yeah, they pray to everything one times a hundred because yeah, they thought yeah, yeah. it. It reminds you that life is is a, it's a moment, yeah. bro. It's a moment. You blink, and also what you think is the order. Yeah, will switch yeah, of course you, so. you yeah, think yeah. oh the oldest dies first and then all of a sudden now Trust the youngest me, one yeah, went man. first so yeah. that flipped the script and then you think whoa what's, what's this ain't this ain't a part of the script and, yeah, man. and obviously that's like that's something when you're like as a parent dealing with a, bearing a child right but people have other things that they deal with that is just as big it might be, but it's different but it's just as big to them yeah, so yeah, man. 100%. yeah but Real talk. credit to you bro for, the, for not you, giving man. up um, like what would you give any because I'm sure there's any people watching this that might be going through things ha- have le- health conditions of their own what would you what advice would you give them when they're feeling low like because obviously you, you went through that believe that your existence is for a higher purpose yeah. the reason I say that is you can feel down you can feel ill you can feel you know so many different things mentally physically or whatnot. but you're here for a reason mm. there's, there is a reason why you're here Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Yeah. That's the way that I look at it. Yeah. I felt like, legit, you think of life and death. Because what I had was, is a life-threatening illness. I thought, why am I still here? There's a reason why I'm still here. Yeah. Not not why 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 I went. Not, oh, uh, people are standing over me now and putting me six foot under. No. That didn't happen. So there must be a reason why I'm still here. Yeah. That kind of drove me forward because I'm like, all right, cool. Like, we find that out. We, we carry on going. Yeah. And also... The people around you are just as important as your as your own self. You being mentally or physically well is just as important for the people around you and vice versa than it is to you as well. Mm. I don't know if that made any sense. No, I feel like did, I'm yeah, just yeah. I'm not trying to say like a whole load of nothing here, but what I'm trying to say is the people around you, because I, I promise you not, I kid you not, wallahi, it was the people around me that pushed me forward and helped me just as much as I might have helped them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, 100%. No, that's beautiful, bro. That's a touching one, man. I can't lie. No, 100%. So let's go to a bit more positive. Yeah, yeah. We can't end on that one. But um, (laughs) what what, what you got going on now then? I know you got a new single out. Yeah, man. I dropped dropped a single called Falling. Uh, I just dropped a video today, actually. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, Um, it's cold. Actually, so a lot of people don't know. I I, I originally released a song like a a few weeks back, but... Mm. um, there was like some situations going on in Bangladesh with with like the student movement and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And out of respect to like the students that were part of the movement, because yeah. a lot of students lost their lives, I actually didn't release the video then. The audio I couldn't really have much of control over because with DSPs you gotta put them out three weeks before and then give them a date. So I couldn't really. It was a, it was like bad timing. I know a lot of people. I got a lot of messages saying you you know ah oh, bro like you're releasing during the time going on you know in Bangladesh and whatnot and, and I respect that. So I didn't actually put, drop the video. The video I had control over. Mm. Obviously now things are a lot more positive. Things are moving up. Yeah. So that's why I put it out there, man. So yeah, man. Yeah, um, man. Bro, you know it's crazy. He he edited the whole video. Yeah. Oh yeah, swear down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a mad did, one. You know what's jokes here? Yeah? So I, if I weren't a singer, I'd be a video editor. Uh, that's like my. That's your passion. That's, that's my passion, yeah. man. I love it. And uh, I still do like some video editing here and like so video directing and stuff. I got like my own. I own my own camera gear. Like I got like. The camera, drone, gimbal, all of that stuff, um, and and that's actually where I learned how to grade on DaVinci Resolve, because like I've, I've become like this. So, so now, like a couple of my brethren that are like video directors and stuff, they send me stuff and be like, "Oh yo, what do you think of the color? Do you reckon you can help with the color and stuff?" Okay. And I do like colorist work yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So it's it's interesting, man. I like it because I like things coming together, um, and I think on a video perspective, because I'm such a creative person, like I just. I don't know. I thought it was dope, man. Oh, I thought that is, I, I just thought video was sick. No, I, f- I, I, like I the rate video. video. I like it. I'm a guy. I love. I love film. And, and, and it's like a throwback I mean? video as well. It's got yeah. the, the colors, the yeah. different um, uh, clothes you're wearing, and stuff. Like I had that. a vision with that because I filmed that actually on like green screens and mm. green screens oh, did and stuff. You? So I done it on green screens and I just kind of figured out how to do like the key and stuff. And I wanted this like Austin Powers slash Scooby Doo. Yeah. I was gonna say it reminded me of Austin Powers because big up like, to you're wearing like a, a suit with a big um, big up collar to my that. sister Notion and my bro Zach who actually did the wardrobes for that. They just, they yeah. styled uh, they styled that man which yeah, was they wicked. Did a sick job. They did yeah, a no, wicked it's cold, job. It's cold. Uh, to be fair, I think they made the video 
and I just thought it was dope, man. Everyone that kind of everyone that was part of the team, man, yeah. was was sick. Yeah, it's something different. Like you don't see them kind of videos. I had bare jokes doing it, man. I was laughing at half of the footage because I'm just like doing like goofy dance moves. You know the Carlton dance. Yeah, yeah. I was doing like bears. <laughs> it was jokes. No, nah, it was amazing. Nah, that's cold, man. I didn't even dance like that, by the way. Yeah, yeah, obviously, just for the video, don't worry. Trust me. But um, yeah, no, I think we're going to have to wrap it up there, man. I think we're going to go over time. But honestly, bro, while it's been a pleasure, man, thank you for My coming pleasure, on. My pleasure, man. Thanks for having um, me, man. Before we do wrap up, there's anything you want to tell the people? Um, yeah, man. Thanks for tuning in. Um, it's been an interesting chat, speaking yeah, about this stuff yeah. with you guys. Sometimes it's nice to speak about something other than music as well. You know, it was yeah. nice to delve into that kind of... And Health I feel like thing. this has been rushed. Like, we, we need to do a part I could sit for hours, bro. We yeah. could sit for hours, man. Yeah. Sit for hours, man. Yeah. But you know what? Um, let's give the listeners something, part one. And if they like it, you know, then if it's by popular demand, we can come back for Facts. part two, man. 100%. But listen, but yeah. people, thank you for rocking with us. Obviously, who, Westside usually does the, the yeah, outro, the outro isn't it? Yeah. We're saying Zeus, you're going to no, do no, it. Zeus. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let's go. And tune in, what, every Sunday, now? Yeah, every Sunday. Peace. Peace.